What are chord substitutions and how can they be used to spice up your jazz chords and solos? Let's talk about five different kinds of jazz chord substitutions you need to know. So what is a chord substitution? So a chord substitution, simply put, is when you take a chord and you replace it with another chord. But of course this happens in the context of a chord progression. There'll be a chord within a chord progression that you may want to sub out with a different chord to add harmonic interest and to add excitement. You can add more color to your comping and voicings and you can add different harmonic context for your jazz improvisation. So take a look here at this very basic jazz chord progression. It's called the 1625 chord progression and it sounds like this. This chord progression can be found all over jazz standards. Think about rhythm changes like I Got Rhythm or Olio, or really just an abundance of jazz standards out there will have the 1625 chord progression in it. But the secret that jazz musicians know is that while this is the chord progression, they can actually do a bunch of different things to this chord progression to again add different colors to their comping or voicings or add different harmonic context to their improvisation. So let's start going over those. Number one is called diatonic substitution. Now diatonic means it's within the key center. And so in this particular case, we're playing a 1-6-2-5 chord progression in the key of concert C. And when we're talking about the chords that are diatonic to C major 7, we're talking about the 1, which is C major, the 2, which is D minor, the 3, which is E minor, the 4, which is F major, the 5 is G7, the 6 is A minor 7, and the 7 is B half diminished. So diatonic substitution would imply that we can actually sub out some of other diatonic chords within the key of C for different chords within this progression. The most functional and common example of this is crossing out here this C major, this one chord, and instead turning it in to a three chord. And the three chord in C major seven would be E minor seven. So now the chord progression would sound like this. And let's say we resolve back to the C major seven again. So now we have a three, six, two, five chord progression, subbing out the three for the one. But another example would be adding more chords to the chord progression while subbing them out at the same time. So a great example would be to cross out this six chord here and instead add the three right there as well. So now we have an E minor seven. However, we also wanna add some chords before and after that. So for example, we might wanna add here the four chord, which is F major seven. So now we have C major seven, F major seven, E minor seven, and then we'll add the six chord, the A minor seven right here. So now in totality, we have a one, four, three, six, two, five chord progression, which sounds like this. So diatonic substitution, taking other chords within the diatonic key center and replacing them for other ones in the chord progression. Number two is secondary dominance. So taking a look back at our one, six, two, five, one, a secondary dominant is essentially when we substitute a chord for a dominant seventh chord that tonicizes the chord after that. I know a lot of fancy terms there, so let me show you. Looking at this six chord right here, the A minor seven, I actually wanna cross this out and instead, over top of this, put an A7 chord. So now the chord progression sounds like this. So it's that dominant six chord, which adds a totally different flavor there and does something really important. And what it does is it actually tonicizes this D minor seven chord. Tonicize means you're making that chord sound like a new one chord. Even though we know that it is actually the two chord, when we add that A7, which is the five chord of D minor seven chord, it for one second makes our ear feel like we're in the key of D minor. And when we do this, it changes the way we think about how to improvise over top of this song. So now instead of A minor, we're thinking about different ways to 
arrive at D minor seven, right? The tension that that A7 chord gives to the chord progression when it resolves to D minor seven. And this is probably the most common chord substitution you'll find in jazz. Jazz musicians all the time will look at chords and turn them into dominant seventh chords. They'll turn the two chord into a dominant seventh chord. You could actually do that as well and turn this D minor seven into a dominant seventh chord. And what that essentially is doing is tonicizing the G7, which is the five chord. And so for this one, we would call it the five of two. And for this one, we would call it the five of five. So we're tonicizing the two and we're tonicizing the five. So in totality, this chord progression now sounds like this. <laughs> So that's secondary dominance. Number three is diminished substitution. So jazz musicians will oftentimes use diminished chords to substitute out for different dominant seventh chords. So for example, remember we talked about how this A minor seven, we could actually turn it into a secondary dominant, so an A seven chord. Well, jazz musicians sometimes will look at that and ask themselves, well, what diminished chord could replace that chord? And in this particular case, it's a C sharp diminished seventh chord. And so now the chord progression would sound like this. So it's that one to the sharp, one diminished, arriving to the two, and then going to the five. It creates a nice tension and release sound from that sharp one diminished to that D minor seven in the same way that an A seven to a D minor seven would. And why is that? Well, one particular alteration we can do to a five chord, especially when it's resolving to a stable chord would be to add the flat nine. So this is an A seven flat nine I'm playing, right? This is the five of six, but with a flat nine in it. Well, when we look at the C sharp diminished chord, it's essentially the exact same chord. There really is no difference. So you can substitute out that diminished seventh chord for that dominant seventh chord. One way you could think about this is whatever the third is of the dominant seventh chord you're playing. So in this case, it'd be C sharp. You can play a diminished seventh chord of that third. So C sharp diminished seventh is essentially the same as playing an A7 flat nine. The cool thing about doing this, of course, is the bass movement it's from C to C sharp chromatically to D minor. And so this creates a different frame of mind and even a different thought process for how you might improvise over top of this chord progression. So that's a diminished replacement. Now, before we keep going, if your brain is starting to churn into mush because I'm using all these music theory terms and it sounds all confusing and overwhelming, don't worry at all. Please stick around to the very end of the video because I'm going to share with you a resource that will help make jazz theory a lot simpler for you and go back to some of the basics that I'm kind of skipping over here. So stick around to the end. Number four is backdoor dominance. Now, quite frankly, backdoor dominance are oftentimes baked in to the chord progression of the jazz standard rather than used as a substitution. So for example, the tune Lady Bird has a backdoor dominant just in the composition of the chord progressions. That being said, you can absolutely still superimpose this concept over top of any chord progression. Now, by definition, a backdoor dominant is when you substitute a five chord for a dominant seventh chord that is a whole step below the chord you are arriving to. So let me explain. Instead of this G7, which inevitably is going to resolve back around to here if we're looping this chord progression, which we have been. And so the question would be, what is the backdoor dominant of G7? So an easy way to think about that is if we're playing a C major seven, what is a whole step below that? So a whole step would be B flat. So what we can play here instead is a B flat seven chord. And this is what it would sound like. Now let's take this a step further. Let's say that we've subbed this A minor seven for an A seven, but let's say we want to do a backdoor dominant of the secondary dominant. So let's cross out the A seven and add a whole step below D minor is C, so let's turn this into a C7 chord. So now the chord progression sounds like this. And to be honest, that sounds a little bit weird because oftentimes in the practice of using backdoor dominance, it's again baked into the composition itself. And oftentimes there is actually a two chord in front of that 
backdoor dominant that leads into the one. So quickly, let's recompose this chord progression all together and actually use the chord progressions that are used in Tad Dameron's Ladybird. So in Tad Dameron's Ladybird, we actually have C major seven for two bars, but then it actually goes to an F minor seven to a B flat seven. Now we already discussed that the B flat seven is the secondary dominant, but essentially what we're doing is we're throwing a two in front of that dominant seven. So it sounds like this. <laughs> Like that. And that's the more practical application that you will see backdoor dominance being used in jazz standards. Number five is tritone substitution. Now the definition of a tritone substitution is it's where we sub a dominant seventh chord for another diatonic chord in the key center, a tritone interval away. Now again, if that kind of blows your mind, let's just pay attention here really quick. Let's focus in here on this G7 chord right here. That's the five chord. And so what I'll do is I'll ask myself, what is a tritone interval away from the note or the bass note G? So a tritone is the flat five or the sharp four. And in this particular case, it is a C sharp. Or since the D minor seven is coming before it, let's call it a D flat and harmonically. So tritone substitution states, let's sub this G seven for the other dominant seventh chord, a tritone interval away. And so that would be a D flat seven chord. So now the chord progression sounds like this. Now that automatically gives it a lot more of a spicy, a lot more tense sound. It almost sounds like it turns that G7 chord into an altered dominant chord, which essentially is what it's doing. Now we would call this one in particular tritone sub of five because we're substituting the five chord for a tritone substitution. But again, let's look back at the six chord. Remember that if we want to add a secondary dominant to this, we can turn this into an A7 chord. And then let's go ahead and cross out that A7 chord and ask ourselves, what is a tritone away from A7? And that would be, in this particular case, E flat. So now let's add an E flat seven chord here, and this would be called a tritone sub of six. And so now it sounds like this. A lot more jazz going on here. But remember we talked about also on this two chord, we could also use a secondary dominant. So let's turn this chord back into a D seven chord, which is again, the five of five, but let's cross this out for its tritone substitution. And a tritone away is A flat. So now instead of this chord, we have an A flat seven chord here. And so now the chord progression sounds like this. this exact chord progression is the turnaround to Tad Damron's Ladybird. So I did mention if any of this music theory is going way over your head and you're like, Brent, let's step back for a second and understand the basics, then check out this video out on the screen right now. It's called Jazz Theory in 15 Minutes. I really just break it all down to the simplest of terms so you don't have to waste your time reading through a million different theory books. And by the way, one of the best ways to get used to these different substitutions and chord progressions is by simply just learning more and more jazz standards where you're gonna see these repeated time and time again. That's exactly what we do every single month in my Inner Circle membership is we learn one new jazz standard a month and make it super easy with a bunch of other musicians. So check it out in the description down below or I'll have it up here on the screen as well. If you like this video and found it valuable, please hit the like button. Please, of course, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.